Hello everybody, Jake here for FM Scout and in today's video we're going to be looking at 10 transfers we're excited about from the recently passed January transfer window, discussing both how we think those transfers could go in real life, plus of course what it could mean for your guys' football manager saves. Now obviously we can't fit every single transfer in this video, we're only doing the top 10, so if someone misses out that you think should be in the video, do let us know down below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you do enjoy the content and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our uploads. Now whilst this transfer window didn't have like crazy moves like we had for Bruno Fernandes to Manchester United last year or any real big money move there was a huge focus on loans and option to buys and things like that as well as some free agent pickups some players that used to be classed as world-class players who now didn't get any game time and have moved on it'll be interesting to see how they do as well as some wonder kids and young players who maybe never really reached their potential getting a move that could finally unlock their power and we could potentially see them becoming really good players so we're going to be looking at all those different types of transfers my top 10 obviously this is only my personal opinion and I'm sure there are people I've missed out but these were just 10 when I was looking at the transfers I thought yeah I'm excited to see how this works out so without further ado let's get into the first exciting transfer of the January transfer window so the first player we're looking at is for Keo Tomori now he is currently at Chelsea in football manager because they haven't had the update yet but he has moved on loan to AC Milan now there are a few reasons why I'm so excited about this firstly in my football manager save with Chelsea which if you want to check it out in the description you can do we only need a few subscribers now to get to a thousand so if you want to help me out there that would be great but yeah in that save he's gone on to be like an elite world-class center back maybe one of the best in the world especially physically which you can already kind of see here he's getting there physically but he is a top level player for us and I actually thought in real life because I'm a Chelsea fan Fikaro Tomori was getting on quite well when he did play last season but then this season all of a sudden he was frozen out of the team we don't really know what happened older more experienced players were preferred and Fikaro Tomori didn't really get a look in now he has moved on loan to AC Milan who have also picked up Mario Mandzukic trying to free and Milan have developed a really good squad and are currently challenging for the Serie A title now Tomori can probably help them quite a bit because if we do look at their defensive positions they do have quite a lot of centre-backs but any that I would consider like really high quality I'm not so sure. That's not me saying I think Fikaro Tomori is guaranteed better than all these centre-backs, but I just think the fact that he's gone on loan with an option to buy, I think it will almost definitely be a confirmed transfer when the summer windows happens, not even if Tomori does well, just because he's an English talent. If he goes overseas, we've all seen it already when an English player goes overseas and then they play well for a couple of years and all of a sudden they come back for 100 million to a Premier League club who buy them just because they're English. It could also potentially mean he gets a place in the Euros team if he does really well and helps AC Milan towards a title. And so far, when he's been playing for him, he's not looked too bad at all. He hasn't really stood out so much, but he settled in quite nicely into their first team. Again, as a Chelsea fan, it's not one I really want to see happen because, like I say, I can almost guarantee that AC Milan will take up this option. But just because, in a football sense, like he could potentially get himself in the England team, do well for himself and start a really good career in football because, of course, he did play well for Derby on loan under Frank Lampard and then played decently for Chelsea too. But it looked like his career at Chelsea had came to a standstill. So this could be a new start for him and maybe, like he does in Football Manager, he could potentially develop into one of the world's best centre-backs. Sticking with young players who do pretty well in Football Manager, we're heading over to Celtic who are in a bit of a mess right now. I think even Celtic fans will agree with that. It's a bit of disarray with the whole manager situation and they've lost a couple of good players. A few of them we're going to look at in this video but the first one they have sold on is Jeremy Frimpong. He has gone to Bayer Leverkusen, who have also gone and signed Fosu Mensa and another young player from the Premier League who we'll discuss in a second. But I think they've got a very good player in their hands in Frimpong. Frimpong used to play for Man City, moved to Celtic. He's done pretty well for them. I don't watch Scottish football enough to know that he's a standout player or anything like that. But the Dutch player is really good on Football Manager. Quite often I actually see him signing for the likes of Barcelona, which I know is a weird one and probably would never happen in real life. But it'll be interesting to see how he plays moving into the top five leagues now into the Bundesliga with a pretty good team in Bayer Leverkusen who are known for having quite a few good young players and then developing them. And it could lead to Jeremy Fringpong really kicking up a gear and becoming a top level right back. So it'll be interesting to see how that move turns out. Celtic fans, if anyone's watching, do let me know in the comments. Do you think you've done quite a good deal getting rid of him? Or do you think it's a loss for your club? Do you think he's going to go on and do big things. So we've just looked at a wonder kid with a bright future and now we're looking at a player who used to be a wonder kid and it hasn't really worked out for him. It's Damari Gray of Leicester. His contract was expiring and for only I think £2 million it was, he has gone and signed for Bayer Leverkusen. He wasn't getting anywhere near the Leicester side nor the England side. Despite having plenty of England under 21 caps, it never really worked out for him. I believe he used to play for Birmingham. Yes, he did. He went to Leicester and you can see it never really paid off. He did okay, but recently since Brendan Rodgers took charge, he's barely featured in the team, particularly this season where I can't remember if I've even 
even seen him once. He's obviously a pacey winger with some decent technical skill and known for a bit of flair and trickery on the wing. Now a move to Bayer Leverkusen, we've seen a lot of English players going abroad recently and the Bundesliga seems like a great place to develop top attacking talent. We've seen it happen with Sancho and many others recently. So maybe this could be the move that gets Damari Gray playing for a Bayer Leverkusen team that have the potential to go on and be one of the top challenging teams if all of their young players perform in the Bundesliga. He could then maybe get himself one day back into the England setup. It's a long way off just now. Maybe he'll completely flop. But it's one that we'll be watching with a lot of interest to see whether Damari Gray does make it in the Bayer Leverkusen team and, and maybe he'll live up to the potential that he once had and become a success overseas. We've looked at some players moving to the Bundesliga and now we're looking at one who has gone back to the Premier League. Ozan Kabak is a Turkish international centre-back playing for Schalke, a team who are in absolute disarray this season, not doing well at all. But Kabak, often in football manager, does actually go on to be a really good centre-back. So when I saw that Liverpool were signing him, I was quite interested, thought oh, that could be a good sign. And then you realise that the Schalke team weren't doing very well with him at the back. So is he that good of a player? This is going to be a big test for him moving to Liverpool, where he'll at least have to play a few games on loan for them, just because of all the injuries they've got as centre-back. As far as I'm aware, they do have an option to make this deal permanent. So it'll be interesting to see how he does do in the Premier League when he does play. I actually think he could be quite a good deal. We've seen the likes of Robertson, Wijnaldum, from teams that weren't doing well at all, and then they came into the Liverpool team and looked really good. Could this potentially be another move like this for Kabak? He's got potential. He's still young. With a coach like Jurgen Klopp, can he train him to be a top-level centre-back? He's not on the taller side for a centre-back but we can see he's got some pretty good defending attributes here. Obviously, that doesn't always correlate into real life, but it will be interesting to see how he does and if Liverpool do decide to make this move permanent. Now, we did mention at the start of the video, we might look at a world-class player who didn't really get much game time and is now going on to get a move to a club that he seems to love. Can he refind his old form and just have a few more years of brilliance that we know he is capable of? It is, of course, Meza Ozil. He's left Arsenal to join Fenerbahce in Turkey. Ozil, whether you think he's passed it or not, we can see in Football Manager here, his technicals are off the charts. 19 technique, 19 first touch, 18 passing, 18 flair, 18 off the ball. It's crazy to think that Arsenal haven't been using him considering the high wage that he was on. I think one of the highest earning players in the Premier League. Now, we can understand why, because... When he had played for Arsenal, it hadn't gone too well, but the sending off that he did get, where he basically got frozen out of the team for years, seems a bit crazy to me. I feel like, especially considering how Arsenal were doing earlier on in this season, where they weren't doing well at all, you would have thought you might have seen Ozil on that much money getting at least a chance. But his move to Fenerbahce could be a good move to him. Now, Fenerbahce are one of the more reputable Turkish teams. Can he take them on to winning the title? And I really hope we can just see a few more moments of magic from Mesut Ozil. We know he's the kind of player from his Real Madrid and Arsenal years where if you put a highlight reel, he looks absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping we'll at least see a couple of them kind of like wonder goals for Fenerbahce or wonder passes and hopefully get back to the Mesut Ozil that we once knew and loved. Now everyone loves a wonder kid on Football Manager and Moises Saicedo is one of them. He plays in the Ecuadorian divisions for Independiente de Valle. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but he's someone that I've actually looked at in my own Chelsea save again. I'll plug it once more. If you want to check that out in the description, feel free. But yeah, he's a really strong central midfielder, defensive midfielder, wherever he wants to be used. He has gone and got a move over to Brighton. He's already capped for the Ecuador team. I know they're not performing amazingly right now, but we've seen Graham Potter, their manager, has often gone and used some young players. We've seen Ben White has stepped up for their team. Can he do a similar thing with Saicedo? I would expect that we won't really see him this season, but who knows? Again, it's another wonder kid. I know Wolves did it in the summer where they just stole every wonder kid so there's no one to buy so we won't be able to sign him straight away on our saves anymore but i'm hoping we do see it work out for saicedo now we're heading back over to celtic who we discussed earlier losing one of their seemingly better players in fring pong now they've definitely lost an important player in their team olivier and cham i don't really know how you pronounce it is a French international and I remember last year on Football Manager he always used to go to Real Madrid and do really well alongside Edouard so I don't know if he's going to be that good on this Football Manager. He looks like a pretty solid player and he's gone and got a move to Marseille. Now this has been talked quite a lot not just because he's a good player because apparently Villas Boas who was the manager of Marseille did not want him at the club and then basically said if you do it I'll resign and they went and signed him so now he's resigned. I don't believe he's the manager of the club anymore. But he is a French international and he has gone over to the French leagues now to play for Marseille. I I think he could be a good player for them. He's a powerful midfielder who looks strong in pretty much every area. So it will be interesting to see how he does. And it's a transfer I'll be keeping a keen eye on. Three players left in this list now and two honourable mentions too. But one of the players we've got left is Moussa Dembele. The Leon striker, formerly of Celtic, has now moved on loan to Atletico Madrid 
with an option to buy. Obviously, Atletico Madrid flying this season, but quite a lot of their strikers are on the aging side. They lost Diego Costa, as far as I'm aware. Luis Suarez is getting on in age, but that doesn't really matter at the minute because he's performing amazing. But it's interesting to see they are looking towards the future, and Moussa Dembele has been a player that's been linked to the likes of Manchester United and Chelsea in recent years. So it looks like Atletico Madrid have picked themselves up a good level striker. How has he done in his career so far? We can see since joining Lyon, he has been prolific up front. So Moussa Dembele looks like a really good striker for any team, and I think Atletico Madrid have really bolstered their squad there. If we do go and look at Madrid strikers, we can see Luis Suarez is getting on. Alvaro Morata, I believe, is at Juventus with, I think, an option to buy. Diego Costa is left on a free transfer now as well. But yeah, Dembele goes and joins Atletico Madrid. He's going to be playing for a great manager under Diego Simeone, and we've seen the likes of Griezmann flourish under him, so maybe Moussa Dembele will too. I think this is going to be the kind of transfer where you won't have to keep an eye on it, just because Atletico Madrid, they're in the Champions League, they're going to be a club that are performing well. I think they've actually got Chelsea, who I support, in the next match. So if he is eligible to play, we're going to have to look out for him. But it looks like Atletico Madrid have got a really good deal on their hands, a loan to buy. Can't really go wrong with this, I don't think. So we've got two players left in this list. After this player, I'll go through a couple of honourable mentions and then we'll go through the last player. Martin Odegaard, the Real Madrid attacking midfielder, has now joined Arsenal on loan. The 21-year-old Norwegian has been talked about as one of the best prospects in world football for a long time. Didn't really work for him for a few years when he signed for Real Madrid, but then he had a pretty good season for Real Sociedad and it looked like he was going to go back there because Real Madrid hadn't used him at all. It looked like he was going to go back on loan there. But Arsenal came in, they've lost Ozil, they've brought in Odegaard. But I think this is a big test for him. Can he do it at the top level now for Arsenal? As a Chelsea fan, I don't really want to see Arsenal do well, but he looks like the kind of player that it looks like a decent sign from. I don't believe there's an option to buy. I don't think Real Madrid wanted one because they probably see the potential that this guy has. Already 22 cats for the Norwegian team. And we can see technically, mentally and physically, he's strong in every area. I mean, we can see here at the age of 21, football manager classes him as a world-class midfielder. And if you've played the game for a couple of years, you know that he goes on to either play for Real Madrid consistently, or I've quite often seen him join Man City, Man United and Chelsea. So that's the kind of level they believe he's at. It'll be interesting to see how it does work out. So we'll keep an eye on that one and we'll go on to the last player in this list after a couple of honourable mentions. Honourable mention number one is Ahmad Diallo. I didn't put him in here just because this transfer has been arranged for a while. It wasn't really a January transfer, but he has now joined Manchester United. Are we going to see him all this season? I would guess not, but next season he might be one to keep an eye on. I think Manchester United might have paid over the odds for this guy, but we don't know. Maybe he could turn out to be like the next Ronaldo, and all of a sudden the, the money they spent on him doesn't look bad at all. But, I mean, in football manager, he doesn't look amazing. But with his determination and flair, he could definitely go on to be a top-level player. But who knows? Maybe in real life it will work out. Like I said, I don't really expect him to play this season. But next season, if we see the likes of Dan James leave Manchester United, maybe there'll be room for Ahmad Diallo to fit into the squad somewhere. I'm not expecting too much, and because it wasn't technically a January transfer, we're just going to keep him in it as an honourable mention. And the other honourable mention is Makuku, who plays for Borussia Dortmund. He wasn't in the game, and it wasn't really a transfer, but he is someone that when the update of the database comes out... After after all the transfer windows are done, he's someone we should definitely see in the game because he isn't in the game at all right now, but he has gone and performed at the age of 16 or 17, I can't remember, for the Borussia Dortmund first team now, so he's technically a player that should be in the game. I expect him to be in the game and I expect him to be one of the best wonder kids too. So it'll be interesting to see what he's like when he does eventually come into the game. And the final player we're looking at is Sebastian Haller, the West Ham striker. Didn't really work out from there. I don't think he was awful, it's just for the 30 million they paid for him, he didn't really do that great. But from anywhere between 15 to 20 million pounds, Pounds. He's now gone and signed for Ajax. It's a bit of a loss on West Ham's end, but they've been performing quite well recently, so I don't think they'll mind too much. They do look like a team who are missing a high-level striker. I mean, this Brian Bobby guy is eventually meant to be leaving. Huntelaar is very old, and Lassina Traore, despite how good he is, I'm not surprised that they have gone for a more experienced striker to play instead of Lassina Traore sometimes. So Haller has gone and joined Ajax for quite a big money move for Ajax too. And who knows how he will get on, because in the Premier League, like I said, it didn't really work out for him, but for Frankfurt, he was an absolutely amazing player for them. Clinical as anything, he was really good when he was in the Eredivisie before, so there's no reason to suggest that he won't be this time. So I'm excited to see how he does do for Ajax, and we'll see how Ohala does do under Ten Hag. So that was the end of today's video, 10 transfers that we're excited about, alongside a couple of honourable mentions too. Obviously, there are so many transfers that I couldn't fit them all into this video, so if I did miss any out that you think we should have talked about, do let me know in the comments what was your favourite transfer of the January transfer window. Did your team sign or sell anyone? And what were your thoughts on it? Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and if you want to check out my channel too, as we get really close to a 1,000 subscribers now, that will mean a lot, and I hope you stay safe, guys and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.